Greetings to you. This is Community Forum, and this is probably like my second little short video I want to do. I don't want to be long, but I want to get straight to the point. Some of the stuff that I mentioned, we'll go over it again. But I guarantee you, if you click the like button, thumbs up, you subscribe, you share, there will be a lot of content that I have. I've been sitting on for years that I'm going to upload and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. But I wanted to talk to you today about something that um, I'm relatively familiar with. And I can't tell you that I'm an expert in, but I'm definitely not a novice in. And that's credit repair. A lot of people run around wanting credit repair. Well, let me just say this. Number one, if you can afford to do it, meaning this. You don't have to come out of your pocket if you're not up against a time constraint to get your credit repaired. You can do it yourself. It's that easy. Most of the places or people who offer credit repair, basically you have a few of them, a few companies that will ask you for a down payment and then they guarantee to get it off, but you have to make monthly payments. That's expensive, that's a waste, and if I were you, I wouldn't bother with it. Then there are others who possibly know someone in one of those credit bureaus where they have some type of connect, and you're gonna pay approximately $2,500, $2,000, somewhere along that line to get it off right away. Okay, so if you choose to do that, that's on you. But there's another way to repair your credit, and I like it because it's the do for self. And let me just start off by saying or giving a short definition of what credit is. Credit is a, an agreement between a lender and a borrower. That's what credit is. It's an agreement between a primarily, generally speaking, it's an agreement between a lender and a borrower. Now, let's say, you know, we all have difficult times in our lives and, you know, you have the hills and the mountains, whatnot, and you may have uh, hit one of those valleys and your credit just messed up bottom line if you let's just go first go with the scores if you have a score I would say between a 300 to 579 they consider that poor anywhere from 300 to 579 now there are two score methods that are used one is called FICO fair Isaac Corporation, FICO. The other one is called Vantage Score, which is used by a company called Credit Karma. The two scores or the way they grade you is different, but your two scores is relatively should be in the same ballpark. Uh, we'll go into that later but I want to throw these things out because I don't want to waste or take up too much time but again 300 to 579 that's poor that's extracting information from the three credit bureau three major credit bureaus the other one 580 to 669 that's fair when you get above when you get to 670 to 739 that's good credit and very good credit is 740 to 799 and from 800 to 850 which is where everyone want to be i'm not there myself but that is excellent credit or an excellent credit score that's where we want to go i would love for you to travel along with me and as i go up you go up okay all right now if you want to do like I mentioned to you before, you want to do it for self because it's less expensive and meaning afford. When I say afford, meaning if you have the time to do it, you 
you know, should do it for self. And now it's October. So now is the one of the best times to do it because what happens in all three agencies, people are taking time off holidays. And so sometimes when you dispute in an accuracy, it kind of slipped through the cracks. And so there's, uh, by law, there's a 30 day window that they have to respond when you dispute an inaccuracy on your credit report. So this is how your credit report or your credit scores are made up or your credit, yeah, and when they look at your credit, pardon me, I apologize, but 35% is your pay history. 35%. 30% is the total amount owed when they look at your credit report, is the total amount owed. So between your pay history and your total amount owed, that's 65% right there. Total amount owed, really means your credit utilization. The 15% is the length of history, your credit history, the length of history. 10% is the credit type, meaning if you have a revolving credit or you have a mortgage loan, you're taking out a loan or credit cards that consist of 10%. And then the remaining 10% is new credit, which you may have applied for something, but just keep in mind that as a result of that, you have inquiries and inquiries reduces your credit score. We can talk about how to get that off also. Very simple process, very simple process. You just call, have your credit frozen and get that inquiry off, but we'll go into that at a later date. Now, again, we're talking about credit repair. There are three major credit bureaus. One is Equifax, Experian, number two, Experian, not necessarily in this order. And then the third one is TransUnion. You can just, you, when you pull it up and you can get one free, one per year free one. And I think actually since the pandemic, they're allowing every month uh, for you to pull up your credit report free of charge. But annualcreditreport.com is one that's well known and that's used. And if I were you, I would pull it up and just to review it. And sometimes there are true inaccuracies. Uh, but what I would say to you is that if you can't afford to pay it, and you don't believe it's yours when it may be yours, but you need to get it off because you're trying to get a house, you're trying to get a car, you're trying to get something where credit is used to determine whether you get it or not, and you see uh, negative items on your report, dispute it, dispute it. It's up to the credit bureau, which is really like a bank, it holds information. It's up to the credit bureau to prove the burden of proof is on them to prove that that negative item is yours. And usually, more than likely, it has to be proven in writing. Now, when you apply for credit, more than likely, you're not signing anything. So when you apply for credit, it's usually electronically. Well, that's going to be difficult to prove. So that's one major loophole that you have. So you start off with an initial dispute letter. And then you can go on to uh, the letters 609 and 611. We'll go into that later. But let me just say this. Whether it's a regular dispute letter, whether it's a 609 letter, letter or, or a 611 letter, the key thing for you to remember, or the key thing that I advice that I could give to you is that it really depends on how well you write the letter. 
You have people offering these credit letters, but all of them are the same. So the credit bureau, they, I mean, they listen to and look at what you and I listen to and look at, and they already know the quote unquote game. So they're already prepared to just reject it. So your creativity in writing these letters is key. It's paramount to you getting that negative item removed off of your credit report. And this is why I say do, do it yourself. And if you're not fortunate enough to be creative in your writing and know how to write, get someone, ask someone to do it for you. I just, that's just something that writing is just something that I don't know, probably is natural to me. I actually went to college for it. And um, so anyway, but it's your creativity and how well you write the letter. And it should be a convincing letter, whether it's a regular dispute, 609 or 611 letter, you can look it up, Google it with 609, 611. We're going to it at a later date. But the thing is, you want to make them and ask them to prove to you that those items on that report belong to you in writing. That's it. And more than likely, they can't do it. And so that's the big loophole with all these thousands and thousands of dollars that you're paying stop. Now, once you are able to get those items off, you know, keep on disputing them if you have to. Once you're able to get those items off, now you have to build your credit because sometimes it's not just negative credit that's holding you down. It's that you don't have enough credit or you need to build your credit. So now here comes another issue. How do you do that? Well, you can go get different credit cards, loans, and one of the things that you can do is borrow against money in your bank and open up another bank account. We'll get into that another time. But one of the quickest ways is trade lines. And they sell trade lines. Once again, I wouldn't do that. Only if you have to and you you know, time is not on your side and you got to do what you got to do, you know, but what I would do, I wouldn't purchase a trade line. I would ask someone that I know to add me on to one of their uh, loans, mortgages, credit cards, so that make you an authorized user. Now you wouldn't necessarily get the card you just be on paper an authorized user and that would help boost your score up. Not only that, you know the person and they know you. But the, <clears throat> excuse me, credit bureau, government, what have you, is cracking down on trade lines because again, it's not something new. It's something that people have been doing and it's not like they don't know it. They know everything that you and I know. But the one thing that we want to do is, as best you can, be legit. If you can pay for them, one of the ways that you can get negative items off, you can negotiate. If you can afford to do it and pay for it and uh, get it, because the collection agencies, if there's a collection agency with a collection agency, they buy it pennies to a dollar. An a thousand dollar item that you have on your credit report that you owe, legitimately or otherwise, they get it for probably 50 bucks, 25 bucks, because that company has written it off. So they already know that they're not going to get it. So they've gotten it for 25 bucks. In fact, if we were wise enough, we should be a collection agency and go and make some of that money but um, and buy some of the bad debt and collect on it ourselves. 
However, but if you are on the other side of that fence and you owe, uh, that's what they do. So you negotiate. So you may owe, and this is just an example, $1,000 on a particular card loan or whatever that's been written off by a company and turned over to the collection agency. All you have to do is go to the collect um, to the collection agency. And if you can afford to do it financially, negotiate. But if you can't, dispute. It doesn't cost you nothing. Well, I shouldn't say that. It does cost you time because you have to take your time. And time is something valuable because you can never get back. You can get money back regardless of how much it is. There's a possibility that you can get that back. But once October 2021 is gone, it'll never, ever, ever come back. The moment that you spend in watching this, it'll never come back. That's why I try to make moments valuable because we can never get it back. All right, so I'm going to close out. I just wanted to share some of the stuff with you. But when you're disputing something and you're sending letters in to the credit bureau as best you can, please don't give them your ID. Please don't sign anything uh, because you don't want that. You don't want them to have that on file. If you have to do it, you have to do it. But if you can avoid doing it, um, try not to do that. So um, I think I wanted to go over those things with you. I hope that it was something that I said that could benefit you and I, and I hope that I didn't waste your time. I thank you for joining me for this particular session of Community Forum. And I just can't wait to upload. It's going to take a little while because I have to get everything in place and I'm moving around I'm transitioning right now. But um, once I get really settled uh, and I'll show you, you know, just how that works, we'll go into everything about credit. But this not only will this won't only be just about credit, it'll be about other things. But because I've had experience, I used to literally, literally, I would fix people credit. And that would be my main source of income many years ago, approximately 15 years ago. That was my main source of income. 15 years ago is fixing credit, but the laws change. And so uh, we have to keep up on it, but I want to go into a lot of things. There's a, just a lot, a whole lot to go through. But once again, I thank you for joining me Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Oh man, and just, uh, I just enjoyed my time uh, spending it with you and giving out the knowledge that I do have or that I'm blessed to have. I wanted to extend it to you. I hope that you will receive it and I hope that you can benefit from it. Until next time, we out, peace.